good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. It's not as hard as for uh, Italians while uh, their fundamental uh, uh, soccer game, but, uh, uh, but still, uh, it's uh, always uh, harder to dedicate uh, sometimes uh, to, uh, to, to uh, a kind of uh, uh, serious thought. And uh, I thank uh, also Luca Cottini in the Department of uh, uh, Italian Studies. And uh, uh, as you will see, above all, uh, those of you who are uh, students of uh, Professor Cottini, uh, with Luca we share many views uh, about, uh, about uh, what is the uh, uh, a kind of action that is meaningful and that becomes uh, an object. Uh, so that uh, really design uh, is uh, something that has to do with uh, thought. And it is uh, a kind of way in which we think. And uh, I'll try to, to show you briefly, in, uh, which is the way in which uh, I figure out uh, this uh, pattern. Um, Th this is uh, a very short uh, overview of this thing. Uh, there, there, are, uh, there, there, there is a, a very short historical part uh, just to say that this kind of thought uh, has grown in the US. And uh, it is uh, an original American thought uh, because, uh, uh, and we will see that. And then, uh, uh, and then we will skip to the most uh, theoretical part uh, by saying which is the usual view, which is the analytic view of our knowledge, and then what is a gesture, and what is the relationship between gesture and uh, design. Uh, very short uh, first part uh, about uh, uh, this uh, story, which is uh, at the beginning, uh, it is between the U.S. and uh, Italy, and uh, also uh, the U.S. and uh, uh, Europe. And the guy on the left is uh, the founder of American pragmatism, and uh, is called Charles Sanders Peirce, uh, a very uh, skilled, uh, to say the least, uh, thinker. I mean, uh, he was uh, one of those uh, who I really will, will uh, name as a genius. Uh, he, a genius uh, is a person that, who, uh, who can say something new in any field uh, to which uh, he applies uh, his thought. First was uh, one of those persons. And th there are not that many, of course, uh, in the history. So he was a mathematician, a chemist, uh, an uh, astronomer and uh, a, a logician, of course. Uh, and in any field, he invented something uh, very important. Uh, and uh, the, the, but uh, he, he had a, a strange kind of life. So he, he was born in Cambridge, in Massachusetts, and he studied uh, at Harvard, but uh, then uh, he had uh, some sort of different uh, ups and downs uh, in his life. Uh, so he, he couldn't really uh, spread uh, his, his thought, uh, which remained uh, confined uh, to uh, a very voluminous uh, uh, corpus of uh, manuscripts, uh, which are at Harvard. Uh, the, the person who really, uh, who, who really uh, brought the, the world of this uh, American philosophy, which is called pragmatism, uh, in the world uh, is William James, uh, uh, which is in the middle. He traveled many times to Europe, uh, and uh, he met uh, different kind of people here. Uh, those uh, in the highest picture are the Italian uh, pragmatists. Uh, of course, the pictures of the time <laughs> are not really, uh, they are a little scary, but uh, uh, they were a bunch of young uh, uh, philosophers. Uh, and, uh, and they started following William James' thought. Uh, this is Bergson, 
Henri Bergson, who had uh, with William James uh, a, a story of correspondence uh, and, uh, he, and who was really keen to William James in his uh, thought. And here we have uh, uh, Schiller, Ferdinand Kenneth Scott Schiller, who was an, a British thinker, and here are the founders of the circle of Vienna, uh, who will be important uh, for uh, the rest uh, of the story. Uh, I, I, I will, uh, don't worry, I, I will not go <laughs> I will not explain pragmatism uh, and uh, his many, its many uh, elements in a, in a few minutes. What I'm going to do is uh, only to, to say that the very important, uh, the core of pragmatism is really the idea of uniting thought and practice. And uh, because we understand something, not when we know really something, uh, not when we know how to define something, not when we know a good definition of something, but when we know how to uh, experiment is something. It is like uh, what we do usually when you study Italian, for example, in your department, uh, is where you have to practice. So, okay, I understood the rule. Perfect. Uh, so I, I, uh, I know what is a name. Perfect. Uh, but uh, uh, where, do you know really what is uh, an Italian verb uh, if you know the definition? Not really. You know it when, when you understand how to use it and uh, what are the situations in which you have to use uh, exactly that verb. At that point, uh, you are taking a, a habit of action. And that habit of action is one of the consequences uh, of the fact that you understood that particular idea. This is, of course, uh, uh, it seems uh, trivial, but uh, it isn't, uh, because uh, pragmatists uh, apply that to all kinds of uh, human thoughts, and uh, they define, they, they uh, change the definition of what uh, science is uh, as well, because uh, science uh, is not uh, uh, about having uh, good, perfect, uh, strict definitions, uh, but to, uh, to know reality better by experimenting it and by understanding, by creating new habits of actions in which you, they, they, that are more fitted to our uh, habitual uh, behavior in, uh, in the context of our life. So th this was the important thing. Behind that or below that, there is a long, long, very complicated story of mathematical studies, uh, of uh, evolutionism, uh, uh, studies on evolution, and uh, uh, about uh, semiotics. First was also the, the first who invented the discipline of study of semiotics, that is the study of uh, science. And uh, th there are a lot of different disciplines uh, which are uh, intertwined uh, into the pragmatist uh, field, uh, the, let's say, the, the pragmatist thought, current of thought. But uh, uh, the main point is this one. I, I, if uh, someone doesn't understand what I'm saying, uh, please uh, raise your hand and uh, ask a question. I, I would prefer to do that. But the, the real idea of pragmatism is uh, to unite uh, thought and practice, uh, to say, well, it's not that practice is something that we do later on, after uh, having understood everything. We understand by our habits of actions. We really understand when we know how to, uh, what are the all conceivable conceivable consequences of our ideas. So th this was the main idea. And uh, here it is the contribution of uh, Italian thinkers. This uh, image that you see is, uh, was uh, the front page of their uh, journal, which was called Leonardo, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci. 
and uh, it, it was a, a, a very important uh, journal which uh, uh, was published uh, between uh, 1903 and 1907, in which uh, they tried uh, this uh, bunch of young people that you saw in that uh, screen picture, tried really to, uh, to do something uh, new. Uh, and they took pragmatism from William James and from uh, America, and they tried to use it uh, against uh, the usual uh, Italian academic culture by saying, oh, here there is something which is not that rationalist or that intellectualist. It is something that, is, that can really change our world uh, and our understanding of the world. Uh, moreover, they put something that uh, uh, wasn't uh, in the original American thought. Uh, that is that they, they really uh, tried to use pragmatism to solve uh, some vital, uh, important problems, uh, like uh, the meaning of life. They really tried. And uh, at, at least they were a little bit uh, uh, disappointed at the end, because they found that this philosophy could have at least in the way they took it, uh, wasn't able to answer to the problems of life. Uh, but still, I think they put uh, something very important, which is this uh, existential leaning, uh, like uh, that it is something that is good for science, uh, and it is good also for logic, it is good uh, for, um, for our general understanding of life, but it must be true also for me, for me in my personal life. So for my ordinary life. Um, now, this is, uh, uh, oh, oops. Uh, so th this is uh, the first part uh, of, uh, of the story. And, uh, but there is another part. Uh, and uh, uh, the other part uh, it is combined with, uh, with what happened afterward, and uh, with also with, uh, with what is uh, uh, normally our way of uh, conceiving knowledge and uh, the universities and our system of knowledge, which, is, uh, which comes from another, another uh, uh, movement uh, from uh, Europe to America, because uh, that group were, uh, was the group of the founders of the Vienna, Vienna Circle, and they took uh, something from pragmatism, which wasn't exactly the existential leaning of uh, Italian pragmatists, but it, it was something different. It was uh, the scientific view uh, for which uh, uh, oh, okay, for understanding something, we have to verify it. Uh, uh, so everything that we can, uh, what, what we can really say, and what we can uh, really say with the meaning, so what is meaningful uh, uh, about our ideas is only what we can uh, verify scientifically. And uh, this is, uh, and then, uh, uh, of course, uh, there is a, a, a sort of derivation of that uh, by saying uh, that uh, this is uh, something that uh, it, it is uh, um, all uh, uh, comprehended in our uh, language. So this is the, a current uh, of thought which is called neo-positivism. But uh, those Europeans uh, uh, had to flee Europe because of Nazism. It was in the early 30s, and they came to the US. Uh, the US uh, hosted them uh, by giving them uh, uh, good positions uh, in uh, your university. And, uh, and they started a kind of thought, this kind of thought, which is uh, not exactly the original version, which is uh, more human and uh, which comprehends more uh, human activities than only the language activity and uh, the scientific attitude. Uh, it is what uh, uh, overtook uh, the, our usual way of understanding the world. 
and uh, I will try to to give you some uh, hints of what I'm uh, saying. Uh, usually, th there is this kind of uh, picture of our chart, uh, which is the analytic picture, that uh, in order to know something, like uh, in the tower in the picture at the far right, we had to understand the elements of it up to the point that we had to know the smallest elements. So to know something means to break up something into the basic elements. So in order to know a language, I had to go back to the phonetic uh, elements, and, and then I will uh, build up on them. And so I have to know the single elements of grammar, or, and this, this is a kind of uh, understanding of our knowledge that is valid in any field. So for knowing, for example, uh, history, I have to know exactly what happened at any moment. And, uh, wow. <laughs> So the, 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 <coughs> the idea is really to arrive to basic fundamental elements in which there is a, an uh, elementary identity, which is A equal A. So I can be really sure because I know there is a, this uh, uh, fundamental uh, first element on which I can, I can build up everything else. Uh, of course, uh, thi this, uh, uh, thi this is not to say that uh, this uh, picture of our knowledge is uh, wrong. Uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, it is uh, only a part of uh, our knowledge. And uh, it, i it is a, an important part. Uh, uh, the analytic uh, knowledge that we have uh, allowed us uh, to know many things uh, and uh, um, uh, to do some uh, some good experiments, uh, the, it is the logical language that we have uh, in our uh, electronic things that we have uh, uh, all over ourselves uh, uh, works uh, usually work uh, by some analytic logic, and uh, uh, of of course uh, there are many things that we can do with that, but there are also some uh, weaknesses. <laughs> So, which is the weakness of this uh, picture of our knowledge? Uh, the weakness is that uh, so sometimes uh, uh, this kind of understanding of knowledge uh, uh, generates uh, a poor creativity. So we are not creative uh, because we have, uh, in order to do something new, we have to know everything, every single element. Otherwise, we cannot say anything, we cannot do anything. So it, it is a kind of uh, thought that uh, uh, risks to provoke uh, a kind of uh, dry understanding of our knowledge. And also, of course, the scientism. That means that uh, this is very important for Italian culture. Uh, unfortunately, our school is conceived that way. So that there is uh, the realm of sciences, uh, which is the, the hard thing, the real knowledge. And then there are humanities, uh, in which, uh, of course, you cannot know anything, because uh, it is uh, simply the weak part of it. And, uh, and so, and this is, uh, uh, so the, we, we can know really something new only in sciences. And the sciences are conceived in a very, very narrow way, like the way we, uh, we said before, like the analytic theory. And of course, that there is a, a huge gap between theory and practice. So you have to study a lot in order to uh, to understand the theory, and then at the end, uh, we apply theory to something, uh, if we are lucky. Because uh, at the end, uh, if we are not uh, exhausted. <laughs> so, uh, th this is why I think we need uh, 
something new, which is not an analytic way of knowing, but a synthetic way of knowing. I will try to sketch that uh, easily. This is uh, another picture because uh, I'm not the only one to think uh, in this way. There are uh, other guys in the world uh, <coughs> who were thinking something like that. Uh, this person here is very important. Uh, he, he was a mathematician, a French mathematician called Cavalier. Uh, and uh, he really talked about gesture, mathematical gesture, as the way in which he, uh, we understand something new in mathematics. And, um, uh, well, I, I will not introduce the others, but uh, I can do that uh, later on in QA. Uh, so, uh, le let's skip to this. What we do when we, when, what we mean by saying that there is a gesture and that with a gesture, we can understand something new. Uh, just, uh, uh, this means that uh, uh, usually, uh, well, no, I think I, I need this. Uh, well, uh, the, we have a synthetic truth, uh, that is we know something new. Synthetic means that uh, I grasp from reality something, uh, something new and uh, I put it uh, into my concept. Uh, while in analy analytic truth uh, means uh, that uh, I have already the concept, uh, I have uh, just to uh, break it up till the end. And, but I will stay with the concept that I have at the beginning. So uh, when we say, for example, Donald Trump is the president of the US, uh, we are saying something synthetic. I discover something new. At, at the moment in which he, he became president. Atom structure is not uniform, for example. Or this piece of art means that sometimes doing something leads to nothing. For example, this is the, a, a, an artwork that we are going to say, uh, to see. And uh, so th this is a synthesis. And uh, what uh, Pragmatist say, said is that uh, there are some actions, also in logic, uh, through which we understand something new. So there is a kind of logic, which is the one uh, I put uh, up there, uh, in which we are understanding something new by drawing. So it, the drawings are really a kind of logic uh, on which uh, with which I can uh, obtain exactly everything that I obtain uh, with the formal symbolic logic. This is the only difficult part. So a gesture is uh, like uh, the drawing uh, in those uh, graphs. So uh, it is an action with a beginning and an end which, uh, be which bears or carries on a meaning. This comes from the verb gero in Latin, which means to carry on. So in order to know something new, something uh, uh, we have to perform this kind of action. Of course, exactly as in the logical drawings, we cannot just perform anything. I mean, there is a structure, but I'm not going to talk to, about it. It is a structure made by certain kinds of signs and uh, a structure made of uh, a certain kind of uh, phenomena, we, we say. But uh, I'm going to the examples, uh, and I think they will clarify what I mean. So this is the, the last two presidents of the U.S. swearing, uh, and uh, on, on the, the, they are on a host. And, uh, and of course, this is a, a, a right. We have a public and private right. In this kind of rights, we understand something new. You can say that, uh, okay, that one has been elected by the majority of votes in some states according to your laws. And, uh, and then he is, of course, the president of the United States. Uh, well, why? Uh, 
why uh, they had to, uh, to take an oath. And in that kind of ceremony, and uh, it is interesting, so they have to perform a certain action in order to obtain what they already are. So there was also a question, in the first time I think Obama uh, took uh, his oath, uh, he um, mispronounced something. And so they were discussing if it was uh, right or not. I mean, if this, this was valid. It, it seems strange, but it is the way in which we carry on a specific meaning. And of course, uh, there are specific meanings that we carry on uh, in different uh, ways, also in private. To organize a dinner in order to say, I love you, we, we organize in everything, like uh, every particular sign, or we set up a, a scene, in, indeed. I mean, we are organizing the whole contest and the whole scene in a certain way. And, uh, we are not going to, to talk about that because they are private. But, but there are private rights to say something. Uh, but the same thing happens with uh, scientific experiments. This is the golden foil experiment in order to prove, uh, to, to prove that uh, the atom structure is not uniform. So th this is a, a very important experiment. And uh, I have to put some elements in certain positions to use uh, certain kinds of phenomena and certain kinds of signs in order to get to the result I want to, uh, which is at the same time, and this is interesting to me, it is synthetic because it is at the same time something that I understand by that example and is something that I communicate in the same kind of action. And it is also what happens with uh, taking an oath or uh, uh, by saying I love you. I understand better what I'm saying and I'm communicating something at the same time. And, uh, and finally, uh, there is, a, this is, for example, is an artistic performance. This guy is called Francois Alice. He's a performer. This performance uh, is uh, about uh, uh, carrying on this uh, uh, ice, tube of ice in uh, Mexico City uh, with 90 degrees, I think, uh, or, and uh, it, for a couple of hours. And of course, uh, at the end, the ice disappears. And uh, the title of this uh, artwork is uh, sometimes nothing because it disappears and uh, of course this is an artistic performance and again we have the same structure so we are doing something and by doing something we are understanding something both uh, uh, the author and uh, the spectator or the people who are uh, talking about it uh, like uh, we are doing uh, tonight. So I hope, uh, so let's say that uh, so far we, we have said that uh, uh, pragmatism, uh, uh, the original American philosophy wanted to unite practice and theory in a profound way. And, uh, and even more, the Italians wanted that to be very existential. And um, what happened afterward was that uh, the pattern of knowledge usually considered wasn't that one, but uh, it, uh, it was the analytic one, which is useful, but which is not everything. And uh, what we are saying is that uh, what is missing in that pattern is this kind of uh, uh, profound understanding of those actions that make us that make us understand why we are doing something. And uh, uh, it can happen in many different fields, uh, like uh, 
public and private rights, uh, scientific examples, uh, and uh, scientific experiments and performances. And now we are uh, to art design, web design, uh, because I think I share with uh, Professor Cottini uh, the idea that uh, when, uh, uh, when that design is uh, really a kind of uh, action in which we embody some thought and uh, in which we uh, embody something meaningful and uh, there is a pattern of this embodiment that we can even study uh, from a logical and mathematical standpoint but uh, uh, I think that uh, what is more m most important is that we uh, understand that uh, those kind of actions are uh, important and they can communicate something a good design can communicate a lot and it's not just a matter of let's say passion in the weak sense of the word because uh, uh, be because it, it is embodying a thought and it is embodying it in a logical way so uh, some advantages of using gestures for cultural heritage and for design. Uh, I think this kind of uh, thought uh, allows us uh, to, to do something very interesting uh, for, from many points of view. It is, uh, uh, in this way, we don't have uh, uh, this uh, curious uh, and uh, notorious distinction among the phases of uh, our knowledge. So if you think, uh, for example, at uh, uh, artwork or uh, heritage, but let's talk about uh, the objects uh, that uh, Professor Cotini studies uh, usually. We, we don't have uh, the idea of saying, oh, there is the phase of uh, uh, understanding what we are doing, then we do an object, then we put the object. The object uh, is useful insofar uh, it is uh, useful for society, and then it goes to museums, and in the museum you have uh, the part, uh, those who are uh, um, specialists in conserving the object, and then uh, those who organize uh, the exhibit, and then those who can communicate it. Now, when we think about the gesture, we are thinking uh, about uh, an action, while when we create uh, an object like that, we are creating it uh, as a communicative object. That is, uh, that is this object makes us uh, know something new and at the same time we are communicating something new and this kind of uh, communication becomes a part of reality and uh, it is uh, by nature something that uh, uh, can communicate uh, always and, uh, and so this, this is uh, also what happens uh, uh, about the fields of inquiry. Uh, I'm very glad I came here to this uh, series of lectures because, uh, um, because usually also our universities, uh, I think both uh, in the US and the rest of the world, uh, uh, we conceive uh, knowledge uh, as divided by fields which are severed to one another from one another and uh, for example in uh, cultural heritage we have uh, the archives and artworks instead of what uh, uh, this uh, series of lectures say uh, says is that uh, really there is no distinction so that uh, looking at an object and looking at culture and doing uh, art is uh, the same thing. And so there are different fields which have to come together, like philosophy, design, uh, language, 
so that culture is much more intertwined than the usual thing. And uh, I can tell this because uh, many of my studies, and I, I, I did the, this kind of uh, discourse uh, at different levels, I, uh, I gave to different kind of public also. And uh, for example, I talked uh, in Paris with uh, a bunch of performers. And uh, in Colombia, we had uh, a huge conference about uh, mathematics. But it's <coughs> really something that has to do with the fact that when we are creative, we are doing something. And we are doing meaningful action that have really the same structure. And uh, so th this is goes also for the future, that uh, the idea is uh, uniting uh, humanism and technologies in uh, new forms. Uh, here, there I mention uh, an app for mobiles that, uh, uh, on which uh, I'm working with uh, some friends of uh, um, an enterprise in, in Italy, which is called the Heritage. And uh, we are uh, creating uh, an application um, that uh, allows uh, blind people to see a museum. And uh, so we are working with sociologists, uh, with uh, people who know about uh, technologies, uh, um, and uh, with people who, who know about uh, uh, about technology for disabled people. And uh, so what kind of uh, new discipline is that? I mean, it is something which mixes up different kind uh, of fields uh, all together. And I think this, this is a, a way in which we are going. And I think, of course, that you are, uh, you, you are, uh, uh, an example of this, uh, <laughs> that there is a new way of learning also. I think that the idea of studying uh, Italian or Italian studies uh, by studying at the same time uh, philosophy and the history of uh, objects and the history of uh, uh, some uh, enterprises is, uh, is a new way of uh, learning which uh, combines together different uh, fields. And uh, I wanted only, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I forgot to download this. This is a very curious, uh, a very curious uh, image of, oh, I don't know the name in English, Grandaya. Uh, gather, gather, for which come which comes from the ancient ancient population of uh, Samnites. It's very nice. Uh, now I forgot to download the video, but uh, uh, because it has two faces, so and it was a very good example of uh, very ancient because we are talking about. Uh, uh, the first century uh, before Christ, uh, and uh, so it was a, a very ancient kind of design, a very artistic and a very elitarian, actually, uh, in uh, just right in the middle of uh, South Italy, where I live. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, I want uh, finish with by saying that uh, this kind of thought uh, has, uh, had always been uh, the kind of thought that, that we human beings uh, use when uh, we are created. And uh, it has always uh, gone in this way uh, since uh, the beginning of the world. Uh, and uh, um, it is uh, something uh, that, for example, uh, the, uh, the point in which human beings uh, uh, become human beings, uh, because uh, it is the, the moment in which they start uh, doing some uh, action with the meaning. Uh, they are crafting something 
and this kind of uh, cropping tools uh, is uh, what uh, I mean by saying that we are doing gestures. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, they, they are uh, uh, here. Uh, there, there are the, this is, uh, the, the person in the middle is Giovanni Papini, oh, okay. who, who was very important. At that time, he was 22. And uh, he founded this uh, very important journal by saying that all academics didn't understand anything about uh, life, knowledge, uh, and everything. But uh, he did that by translating into Italian some important authors uh, like Kierkegaard, and Nietzsche, uh, and William James. And, uh, and uh, the person on the right was his mentor, who was a little older. He, he was 40 at the time. And then he died, uh, unfortunately, too soon. And uh, he was called uh, Giovanni Vailati. And uh, he was a former collaborator of uh, Piano, the mathematician and the logician. And uh, so, and uh, he was probably the mind that uh, uh, mentored uh, the, the, the young uh, pragmatists. And then there, there was a, another important figure also for American culture, who was uh, Giuseppe Prezzolini, who uh, ended up uh, in the US by founding in New York City the Italian, the Italian house at the Columbia University. And, uh, and, there are, and there were also several people around them, but the, those were the main uh, characters. And uh, unfortunately, after that, uh, the, there is also, uh, unfortunately, the, when they closed down the, the journal, then Bailati died, and so the the <laughs> pragmatist experience uh, disappeared for uh, at least uh, at that point. But uh, I think uh, it went uh, underneath uh, the, the main currents, which uh, in Italy were uh, idealism and then Marxism. Well, and I, I guess, yeah, I was wondering, sorry if I can ask those yeah, questions. Yeah, sure. Um, that's why I was kind of wondering about, actually, besides like, who the pragmatists themselves were, um, what the relationship was with idealism and Marxism, especially, I don't know, I studied the first half of the 20th century, but. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit about that. Or well, well, uh, well, of course, uh, well, the, the reaction, idealism was the official philosophy, let's say, of Italian culture. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and uh, of course the, the uh, they didn't take them uh, very seriously uh, or well Croce w was uh, the, the the big uh, figure uh, among uh, Italian idealists who took them seriously by trying to to say well what you found uh, in pragmatism is exactly what I'm saying and after all Prezzolini ended up uh, uh, to work with Croce in, a, in another journal, but it was uh, afterwards in 1911, and the journal was La Voce. And uh, but they, uh, at least they put something uh, important and new. Uh, and the Marxism, of course, there is a, a small quote by Gramsci many years later. Uh, it says, well, there was something good about this uh, kind of idea by Charles Sanders course about verifying something, but not, not, not really something uh, substantial. And not even, uh, there, there, there is a, a long debate about uh, Mussolini as being uh, uh, influenced by Papini and therefore by pragmatism because Mussolini, in an interview to the New York Times say, in 19... Uh, uh, 29 said uh, that one of his masters uh, was uh, William James, but uh, uh, we are sure he didn't re read uh, William James at all. I mean, he was just boasting. He was just saying to the interviewer something which could sound American. And then he basically chose an idealist philosopher. Yeah, exactly. Idealism, uh, gentilis idealist uh, philosophy was uh, pretty much an official philosophy. I, mean. uh, I have a question for you about the power of gesture. Yeah. So we, we had an interesting example in the United States the other day <clears throat> where a woman was riding a bicycle <clears throat> by President Trump's motorcade and she decided to give him the finger <laughs> and keep it up in the air um, for quite a while as she was driving. And a few days after that, she was fired. <laughs> um, Talking about gesture. Yeah. Now, if, if she had said, I hate you, President Trump, or you should resign, or all of that, she probably wouldn't have been fired. There's something about that gesture. It's vulgar. Yeah. It's, and and uh, so my, my question is, there, it seems to me there is this sense that many of us have that gestures have a power that the equivalent language might not have. And does that fit at all with your, your theory of gesture? Because in one sense, gesture is ambiguous because we don't have the word. What does that person really mean? In another sense, it seems so powerful that big things happen, like getting fired or for doing it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think there is a relation. And, and uh, I. Uh, I really chose the word uh, on purpose, of course. I mean, I, I know that uh, any time, oh, an Italian that, uh, who, who wrote a, a book about gestures, of course, uh, all Italians are, are gesturing all the time. And uh, that's, uh, yes, which is true, but uh, gestures, uh, uh, it, it was exactly what I wanted to say, that uh, our idea of gesturing and our usual gesturing is a really, let's say, a weak form, then there is a long classification if one wants to read the book of different uh, kinds of gestures, like uh, a scientific experiment is not like giving a finger. But, but, uh, uh, but there is a, lit a different kind of, uh, but uh, of course, uh, there is always the same, uh, uh, the same uh, structure for which uh, doing something, uh, we mean something and we say something. And sometimes, uh, and uh, what I, I think is that our language is a kind of gesture. When you learn a foreign language, for example, you know that you have to perform, uh, to, to perform uh, uh, in a certain way, to put your tongue in a certain way, to to pronounce with a certain accent, and uh, and, there, and 
at the beginning, this, uh, of course, uh, implies a lot of work, which is exactly what we are, and by doing this work, we understand what we are saying better. And, uh, and the more we talk, the more we understand. So what I'm saying is that the language is a kind of gesture. And uh, yes, I think uh, our usual gesturing is, uh, is really uh, what remains in our language of the fact that we need also to know something new. We need also our body, and which is And uh, there is a last consideration just uh, that uh, the vagueness of it uh, is important because uh, in, uh, when we embody something uh, in gestures, uh, I think uh, we are implying uh, a vague background which is uh, uh, much wider than, uh, than what we can imply by definition. So uh, sometimes uh, also gestures like that uh, imply much more than uh, a strict definition of uh, why and how I hate uh, this or that. Okay.